Hey. All right, y'all, what's going on, boy? I mean, I said, what's going on, boy? <laughs> y'all now, it's, it's multiple genders watching this, okay? So let me respect everybody. Welcome back to the Iron Bruce Leroy channel. Before we get started with today's video, I need you to like, comment, subscribe, I kick all y'all asses. That's fine. I know I do already. Follow me on all my social medias, Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, everything's at I am Bruce Leroy. All right, so the reason why I'm trying to hurry this up because I was technically supposed to film all this shit on my own, but uh, on, not, not on my own. Fucked up. I was technically supposed to film all of this on a on, on my cell phone, but, but my cell phone just kept freezing, just like how I keep stuttering just now. So like how I'm stuttering was exactly how my phone was working. Anyway, all jokes aside, my phone kept uh, stuttering, it, it kept freezing and glitching. So I'm just going to do all of this shit on the camera, okay? So um, this is like a video. So I, I, I'm going to get straight to the point. So over, I'd say the last couple-ish days, I've been receiving uh, a lot of support. Like I've been receiving more views. One of my videos got to 1.3K views. You know what I'm saying? I'm getting more likes. It used to be a time where I was getting like 25 views, 10 views, 15, 30 sometimes, not, not even really crossing 50. And I will be lucky to get even one like. Now I'm getting more comments, I'm getting more likes. And it's all because of the fact that I've, you know, I feel like I've done a really, really good job on trying to be, uh, move this down a little bit. Yeah, so I've done a, a really, really good job, at least from my point of view, of making it my business, being more intentional about trying to actually film content, right? Which is something that, sorry, not film content, I made a mistake. I've been trying to be more intentional about actually going about me being more consistent and actually posting content on social media, right? So whether it be at least one upload a day, two uploads, whatever the case may be, I've been doing the best I can to try to make it happen and try to, you know, really take it seriously, okay? So here's the reality situation uh, moving forward. So first and foremost, for those that's been viewing my content, liking my comment, content, commenting on my content, uh, I appreciate each and every one of you, okay? Uh, obviously, this is nothing. I didn't go viral or anything like that just yet. But I am seeing a significant raise in support, a, a significant raise in awareness of who I am and significant awareness of my platform in general, okay? So each and every one of y'all, I appreciate y'all from the bottom of my heart. But unfortunately, uh, while I am very, very grateful and I'm showing, I'm doing the best I can to show gratitude to you all, uh, for, you know, supporting me, even if it's just you viewing it. You don't have to, like, like the motherfucker. But y'all viewing the content, I really appreciate it. So now, this video, the video's gonna be a little bit more of a sour note. So, some of y'all niggas been trifling, man. I ain't gonna lie to you. Um, so, here's the thing, okay? So, uh, I had a video that came out. Uh, it was about Vic Fangio and my opinion about him. So I basically, you know, I, I was talking. So it was about the so Kellen Moore and um, Vic Fangio, the new defensive coordinator for the Eagles, and Kellen Moore is obviously the new offensive coordinator for the Eagles. So I had a conversation. I posted like a little five minute video about five minutes, not exactly, but whatever. It is, it, it, that's not particularly relevant. So I posted, you know, approximately a five minute video discussing how I felt about their press conferences and, and what they said. And I gave some opinions that some of y'all didn't like. And it was always coming to the point where y'all was calling me out of my name. Y'all was calling me soft and doing all this extra shit. Like, y'all should quit YouTube. I don't like you. Why you should just quit? Whatever the case may be. And I was talking a lot of shit. All right. And y'all calling me soft. Y'all out of control. Because at the end of the day, if it's an in person thing, it, it, it's not going to go the way y'all think it's going to go. All right. I ain't no tough guy, none of that, but, like, stop calling me out my fucking name, okay? Like, if you can't come to my page and respectfully disagree, just go in and keep scrolling. I'm not going to get upset if you view my content and didn't like or comment. Just, just, just keep scrolling, right? So y'all have, have a right to disagree with me, you know what I'm saying? But you don't have a right to call me out of my name because we have differing viewpoints, right? I can understand if I said some shit and didn't have any evidence to back it up. But that's not, that's not necessarily what happened. What ended up taking place was I had evidence to back up what I was saying, and I had my own opinion. It was just different from different from the status quo, and I'll I'll dive into it a little further right now. So, I'm a Joey Shakes fan. For those that don't know, Joey Shakes is the Eagles content creator, right? And I'm also I I, uh, I from time to time watch other people's uh, other Eagles content creators and their videos from time to time as well, and I see that some of you Eagles fans be hella toxic, like. 
when a content creator says something that goes against the, the status quo of the opinion about a team, is critiquing the team in some form or fashion, or it's not necessarily praising the team to y'all particularly like y'all particular liking, or it's too pessimistic for y'all, y'all start going doing the most and start trying to either invalidate the opinion or y'all will simply call a person out of their name on some weird shit. Again, res a respectful disagreeing, a disagreement or a difference of opinion is all good. But you're not going to invalidate how the fuck I feel. Some of y'all will talk about you're just a reporter, you're looking for a hot take. And here's a reality situation. Y'all saying what y'all saying because y'all new to the platform. Y'all just came on. So y'all looking at the recent videos. You're not looking at this shit from six months ago, year ago, two years ago. I've been doing this shit since, like, give or take. I've been really just kind of being in front of this camera for, I'd say, at least two to three years. Okay, this, this, this isn't my first rodeo. I've been doing the best I can to try to improve. And the results are starting to show, especially when it comes to social media. I've been doing the best I can to try to, you know, just be more consistent, but... I've been in front of the camera for the longest. And if you actually took time to watch our videos, which I, which I know is not going to be the easiest thing to do because the motherfuckers be damn near a whole hour. I'll be creating content that's like half a half hour to an hour. Like that's normal. That's my normal time frame of, of the uh, of, of how much content that, 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 that I'm shooting. Right. So here's a reality situation. I, I, I'm, I'm going to be all the way straightforward with y'all niggas. Number one, don't come my content. Call me on my name. I don't appreciate that. Number two, we are not supposed to have the same opinions. We're not. Otherwise, what the hell is the point of me as a content creator if I'm saying what the hell everybody else is saying? If I don't have my own thought process, if I don't have my own brain to be able to interpret things the way I interpret them and then share it, what the hell is the point of me as a content creator in, in general? Why the hell do I even turn on a camera and post it on any social media in, in the first place? So by design, uh, not only do I have a right to my opinion, because it's my fucking opinion, also know that I'm a, my own human being with my own experiences. So, in, the, in that way, it's going to shape how I feel about certain things. Do I apologize for that? No. Do I, like, oh my god, you're a failure? No, that's a part of life. Uh, how we, we interpret things in different ways. All you got to say something that's far-fetched without any, any, you know, explanation or any logical reasoning behind it. Uh, it shouldn't be a problem, but it's clearly a problem for some of y'all. So, y'all were attacking me because I said I didn't, I don't really like Vic Fangio as a coordinator. I really don't. And I pointed out some things like, I, I talked about a lot of shit, but y'all specifically pointed out certain examples. Like, y'all were getting upset, but like, yeah, why did you make it a big deal that he was, uh, he wasn't really complaining about the noise? Yes, the fuck he was. Yes, the fuck he was. Like, I, I, I don't understand. Like, you're saying, like, he was, he didn't complain, but he just said one sentence. Motherfucker, he could have said a fragment of a sentence. He could have had, had a fucking dependent clause. The nigga said what he said. Right now, uh, if you watch the fucking video instead of looking for things to react to, because the shit was only five minutes. It wasn't like my normal half hour to hour videos, right? So it's no excuses. Y'all could have watched the whole video and actually understood what I was coming from in its entirety. Because I didn't post any clips. I just posted a five-minute video on, on both of the coordinators. And that was it. I, I, I left it at that. So, y'all started calling me soft and all this extra shit. Told me I should quit. All, 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 all this weird shit y'all be on. So, here's the thing. Yes, it was annoying. But why the fuck are you bitching about something that you can't control? He couldn't control what was going on. Most likely, and I'm not saying anything concrete, because it's, it's, it's not like I was there. From the from hearing it, it sounded like it was kids. So really, I guess whoever was chaperoning could have told him, "Hey, y'all, y'all keep it down," because there's people interviewing. That there, there's people interviewing, it, and they're they're being asked questions, so they have to hear the reporters, and they also have to be able to respond, so that way the media and the press can hear what they're saying, right? They could have told me that, but really, it's, as, as annoying as it is, there's really nothing you can do about it. It's out of your control. Just focus on the goddamn interview, right? And then, y'all also missed a couple of videos I posted before that, where I mentioned that Darius Slade talked about, well, he's, he's a really laid-back guy. He, he's the type of guy where he likes to, you know, he's not really going to be out there. He's going to be sitting back. And I told him, like, we don't need that, that, that introverted shit. Matter of fact, I might have put it in, like, the five-minute video beforehand. I don't think I even put it in the, the, the longer-form content. 
But I talked about how he needs to be out there developing a relationship with a bond between these players, right? I, I mentioned this. So I said a whole lot of shit. That was just that video. Y'all chose to shoot that specific video. And then also y'all talked about some shit where it's like, oh, well, he didn't throw Bryce Huff under the bus. Yes, he did. We don't need to know that he's not developing at this point in time. You could have said something like, you know, it, it's it's a work in progress, but it's still early in training camp, but we're, we're, we're working some things out. Like, I like the fact that he acknowledged, like, hey, he got the talent to do it, but don't just say the nigga ain't ready. That's some shit y'all could do in a training camp. It's just like, it's not necessarily a bad thing, but it, it tells me a lot about you. And at the end of the day, Y'all looking at it like, oh my God, he's we're finally going to get some toughness in Philadelphia. We're finally getting this hard-nosed ass old grouch who's really going to be getting on these players' head. And y'all misinterpret what a defensive coordinator job is, what a coach's job is. A coach's job is not to run a dictatorship. I'm going to say this one more fucking time. A coach's job is not to run a goddamn dictatorship. His job is to get, make sure the players are ready to play. Okay, they they have a, he has a system in place. And the players follow that system, and you the, hopefully the, the system that is being instilled to the players becomes successful so they can get the, the most performance out of the players. That's why, that's the purpose of a coach. A coach is not there to be a fucking dictator. It's not there, to, the, nigga, the nigga not there to be King Jong-un, all right? That's not his fucking job. He's not there to be Joseph Stalin, Mussolini, or any of the motherfucking dictators in, 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 in the history of mankind. He's not there to do that. He's not there to be no fucking Gaddafi. He's a defensive coordinator. He's a coach. That's it. A coach, a great coach, has two aspects to him. Not just one. Has two. The first thing is being tough, holding players accountable. That part Vic Fangio has, which is what we actually need. Okay? We need the players to be held accountable. When they, when they fuck up, when they're not doing their job, they need to be told they're not doing their job. Because that shit, that last seven weeks of, of, of NFL football from last year was fucking hideous. I don't ever want to see that shit again as an Eagles fan. I might, I, hopefully, if I see it again, it's not any time within the next two to three years, all right? At the very least. The bottom line is this. Okay, when it comes to Vic Fangio. He got the hard part right. It, it's kind of like culture. It's like parenting, man. It, it, it's just like it. It's like you got to bring the tough love and discipline so that way your kids don't grow up to be spoiled fucks who just run, walk all over you and, and disrespect you and then crash out and they're ruining their own life. You know what I'm saying? Then they grow up and they have no respect for you as a parent, right? So the tough love, the strictness, the guidelines, the boundaries need to be set between the parent and the child. Same thing with a coach. A coach has to come in his head and say, like, listen, I'm not here to be your friend. I fuck with you, y'all family, but I'm not here to be your friend. I'm here to make sure that you guys perform on that field the best way possible. That's my response. That's my first responsibility. So don't get it twisted, right? My job is to make sure you perform the way you're supposed to. If you can't perform, then you don't need to be either out on the field or you don't need to be on the team in general. That's his first job. His second job, his second uh, coordinator coach's job is to bring the players together, okay? I'm going to tell you, give you a few examples of guys who understand this balance, okay? Dan Campbell, number one, Dan Campbell, that McDonald guy from Baltimore, Spagnola from uh, the defensive coordinator for the Chiefs, Robert Sala, D'Amico Ryan. Those are guys that understand this. They have a mastery of knowing how to be tough and hold the players accountable and Tell, let him know that's family. I remember there was a uh, like at the end of the season after the after they lost to the 49ers, Detroit Lions, Jared Goff, who everybody written off, Jared Goff, you know, spoke very highly of Dan Campbell. And everybody knows Dan Campbell's like this big tough guy. He used to play football, and he's a, he he really does a great job connecting with his players. Dan Campbell almost started crying. He probably I think he was crying. And y'all know how tough Dan Campbell, like Dan Campbell's a man's man. You know what I'm saying? Pause. But y'all understand where I'm coming from. So he's a man's man. And he, he, he broke down and it, and, and, it, and it meant something to him that his players spoke highly of him like that. And y'all keep saying, oh, these, these Dolphin players and stuff. See, here's the thing. Y'all mad at me for what I'm basically saying the same shit some of these Dolphins players were saying. Even Tyreek Hill was like told his agent, said, yo, stop snitching. So I'm not the only motherfucker that feel this way. The Dolphins players said the same shit, right? And y'all try to dismiss it like it don't mean anything, but keep this in mind. 
The Dolphins' defense was getting their asses handed to them towards the end of the year and into the playoffs. They had some, the defense had some good games, but they got their asses handed to them. Okay, and that's because that the you know the that particular scheme as far as having guys all the way back. It's very dangerous, especially for a quarterback that really knows what he's doing. He's going to pick y'all asses apart for like 300, 400, 500 yards. You know what I'm saying? Like, like it's not a good defense. It's really not. Like, we can make it work, and I, I and we got the guy who's supposed to be the, the face of that defense. But realistically speaking, it's not really a good defense to begin with. It's creative. It's interesting. But it's not really an effective way to play top-notch defense. It's, it's just not. Because you're giving these receivers who are quick and fast – too much room, and if they can really, if they're strong and they're fast, you know, guys like Debo Sam, they're going to break out that motherfucking tackle and just take that shit for like 10, 15, 20 yards every time they catch the ball. So, all right, cool. All I got to do is travel five yards to get to a route, and then I, I then I can just get him at an angle where I can break the tackle and then show off my speed and go get maybe a first down and, and then some, then I'm, I'm going to do that. So, yeah, y'all, y'all are ignoring the signs because y'all just caught up in the fact, old school, old school, oh my God, he's tough. He's tough on these players. Like, but you're not you 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 you're just looking at things on a surface level. I'm am looking at things deeper than that. I'm looking at things like the whole package. Cuz all great defensive coordinators, the players actually want to play for them. They will go to war for their coordinator, for their coach. Just off the strength of uh the the respect level. And Listen, listen very carefully. Players are going to say whatever they're going to say when they're on the team. Why would a player, if I fucking dislike a defensive coordinator, why the fuck would I go in an interview and, and, and say he trash? Why he's still my coordinator? Why he's still my coach? Why the fuck would I do that? Why would any player do that? Why would any player, like if they truly didn't like him? That's some shit that like maybe you know, with these player podcasts, when their careers all said and done, that they'll tell the truth about, the, about, the, about how the coach really was. But they'll never, these players are professionals, and at the end of the day, you can potentially risk getting fined, you know, talking too crazy. So that's money that can come out of their pocket. So you have to be careful what you say. You have to be a professional. You know what I'm saying? Especially if the coordinator's still there or the coach's still there, they might make an example and do what the fuck the Denver Broncos did with Russell Wilson and make sure he doesn't play despite how they give him the big contract. So you have to be careful burning that bridge while the person is still there. So they're not going to really say how they really feel about him. Okay, of course they're going to give you this story. Some people, some people do genuinely like him. I'm not going to say that's not true. But at the end of the day, regardless of what my opinion is or what your opinion is, that man still has to get those players ready to play. And how they perform on that motherfucking field is going to tell me everything I need to know. How he performs when the team is successful and when they receive some bumps in a row, maybe some loss, maybe they're on a lose to maybe the, the the defense, these offenses are, are figuring out the defense. How he responds to both success and how he responds to failure, really the latter the most, is going to tell me what he really is as a defensive coordinator. So regardless of what my how I feel or how y'all feel, that's the reality of the situation. And I'm not looking at things how y'all looking at things. Otherwise, there's no point in me being a content creator saying what uh, everybody else is saying. You feel me? So here's the reality of the situation. Okay, moving forward. Number one, y'all new booties. Because I say what the fuck I want to say on my channel. I didn't create a YouTube to be a fucking, well, somebody call me a reporter. Motherfucker, I'm not Skip Bayless. I created a YouTube, how Cam and Mace doing their sports talk. I created a YouTube to do what the fuck they were doing. Only difference is that I did what I was doing my shit before they had their show. I'm not saying I'm Cam Mace level fan, as I'm not. But I created my platform before they did, doing the same shit. I just did it on a wide range of topics. One of those topics happened to be something that the algorithm is currently favor right now. That's Eagles content. I talk about music. Uh, what else I talk about? So I talk about the Eagles. I talk about music. And that's, that's pretty much... Oh, yeah, I, I do comedy and reactions. And I, I do sketches and shit like that. I do a whole wide range of things. I didn't create this fucking channel... To be the biggest YouTuber on the planet. I didn't create this channel to be another fucking Mr. Beast. I didn't create this channel to be DDG or Queen Nog. I didn't do this shit for that. I created this motherfucking channel because I have things I like to talk about. Why the fuck do you think that if you look at my feed right now, there's literally a video about every little fucking thing? That's what, why, 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 why you think I don't, I don't, I don't just talk? Because the, the, con, the algorithm, as I'm looking at the numbers and paying attention, it's favoring Eagles content. Why the fuck?
fuck do you think I sit up there and say, fuck the algorithm, I do what I want to do? Why do you think, I, why, 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 why do you think that is? Because I don't give a fuck. Because I create what the fuck I want to create, and I express myself how I want to express myself. I'm not fucking scared Bayless, bitch. I ain't Stephen A. Smith, nigga. I say what the fuck I want to say on my channel. I say how I say it, when I want to say it, whatever the fuck I want to say. I don't give a fuck. And y'all new booties don't understand that because y'all just y'all just came to the page. So y'all think I'm going to sit up there and you know y'all pander to who y'all pander to. Y'all have y'all ways of how people should see things. Y'all niggas could probably bully other Eagles content creators. You're not bullying me. I'm telling you that shit right now to y'all face. Y'all not bully me, my nigga. Because number one, I'm not an Eagles content creator. I'm a fucking entertainer. I'm not an artist. I'm an entertainer. What does that fucking mean? Okay, bet. I'm going to tell y'all. I'm an actor. I'm a hip-hop and R&B artist. I'm a musician. I'm a performer. Uh, I'm a comedian. Uh, I'm a YouTuber. I do graphic design from time to time. I edit my own videos. You, like, you know, I created all my thumbnails myself when I was formerly Snake Eyes. I did all of my uh, cover art. Okay? So, the purpose of me saying I'm not an artist, I'm entertained, I put on different fucking hats. Whatever the fuck I feel like doing, I just go and do it. You know what I'm saying? Because I want to do that. Not because I'm appeasing an algorithm, I'm looking to, oh, I, I, this would be good for TikTok, this would be good for YouTube. No, I just do what the fuck I like. And when I post a short, I be like, you know what, I think this is funny. And then if y'all y'all like it, y'all like it. If y'all don't like it, okay, they didn't, they didn't really like this one. As much as you thought they was going to, next video, next short, whatever the case may be, next uh, 30 seconds clip, reel, whatever the fuck it may be, okay? I didn't create going YouTube to blow up. I want to blow up as a musician. I don't want to blow up doing this shit. Why? Because I'm a controversial motherfucker. Not because I go out of my way to, because I, I say what the fuck I want to say. I do what the fuck I want to. I, I don't give a shit. And that's not going to bode well for somebody, somebody that's as edgy and as confident, as strong as me, as, as sort of like being very strong-minded individual. It doesn't go well with a lot of people. It's not going to go well with sponsors. It's not going to go well with, 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 with certain, uh, with the algorithm. It's not going to go well with, you know, brands looking to sign me and give me a bunch of money. It's not going to go well with that because they don't want a motherfucker that say whatever the fuck he want to say. They don't want nobody like that. They want a person that's just like, yo, take this money, do what the fuck we ask you to do, follow these guidelines, sit there and shut up. I'm not that type of nigga. I say what the fuck I want to say. So y'all new booty just coming on there, disregarding I have about two, three years worth of content already out in this motherfucker. Y'all just catching the last two, three videos. Nobody, I mean absolutely no motherfucking body's going to tell me what I can say why I can't sell my motherfucking channel. Y'all can disagree with me, y'all have that right. Y'all can argue me, debate with me. I'm cool. As long as it's respectful, you're not calling me out, calling me out of my name. Awesome. What you're not going to do, though, what you're not going to fucking do is bully me. Because I didn't come with this motherfucking platform, YouTube or whatever, to blow up. I came with this motherfucker like, yo, I like what I like. I don't have any motherfucking friends. And on top of that, as a musician, I have to understand that content is king. Cool. Content is king. I fuck with it. I have certain skill sets, charisma, I got jokes for days, and I and I I I I got I, I got a big ass mouth. Let me go put that to use, pause. Let me go put it to use in front of a camera and just talk my shit. However I feel about any situation, whether that be hip hop, R and B, Eagles, whether that be fucking uh reacting and doing comedy sketches to memes, to the button videos, all that shit. That's what I do. I'm not a fucking reporter, nigga. I'm not Stephen A. Smith. I'm not Skip Bayless, nigga. I'm not Ryan Hollis. Who the fuck you think? I ain't Shannon Sharp, nigga. I say what the fuck I want to say. What the fuck is y'all like? Y'all must be smoking crap, nigga. Y'all must be on some fucking... Y'all niggas must be sniffing powder Laffy Taffy or some shit. Y'all niggas on that Willy Wonka. Because ain't no motherfucking way you going to tell me how, what the I can or cannot say my channel. Bitch, if you lost your motherfucking mind, y'all must have lost your motherfucking mind. I swear to God, y'all must have lost your mind. Don't tell me what I can or cannot say on my motherfucking channel. I say what I want to say. All right? So I don't want to make this video that long. But all in all, while I appreciate y'all support, okay, do not tell me what I can or cannot say on my motherfucking channel. Because y'all don't run me. Y'all run yourselves. Whatever that can say be, all right?
Y'all run y'all selves. Y'all tell y'all selves what to do. Y'all dictate. Some of y'all don't even do that. Y'all don't like the content, just keep fucking scrolling. Plain and simple. And I apologize, but I had to, I had to let loose on motherfuckers. I gotta let niggas know, hey, you're not gonna bully me into doing shit. You're not gonna bully me to say whatever the fuck y'all want me to say. No, I say what I wanna say. So if I feel like Vic Fangio's not a good defensive coordinator, I'ma say he's not a good defensive coordinator. If I say that such and such is overrated, that motherfucker overrated. If I say that motherfucker underrated, he's underrated. Or she, or whoever the case may be, whoever the hell I, I want, whatever I wanna say, whatever my opinions are, I stand on them shit ten toes, nigga. Hee hee hee. I stand on them shits, nigga. I don't care about being hated. I don't. Y'all do. I don't. So, don't get it fucked up. I didn't come on this platform to blow. I came on this platform because I want to say what the fuck I want to say. I don't have no friends. So, I'm like, alright, let me try to find something that's going to work for me. But I didn't come on this platform to make no fucking money. I didn't come on this platform for money. If I came on this platform for money, I would have stopped doing this shit three years ago. Because I told y'all. I was getting 20 views. I was getting 15 views. I was getting no likes. Over and over and over again for a period of three consecutive years. Until now, I started getting more traction. Algorithm telling me do more Eagles content. Man, fuck that algorithm. I do what I want to do. And I'm still going to get the numbers. Because I, cause I, 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 I'm that nigga. I, I know how to entertain in multiple mediums. I'm, I'm a versatile motherfucker. Whatever I touch is gold. The fuck, fuck an algorithm, nigga. I am the algorithm. Fuck you mean. But anyway, that's it. So I got to say, y'all. Enjoy the rest of y'all weekend, man. I got some more content coming y'all way. Got another bit of, I'm going to have a... Another uh, meme day coming up, and uh, we'll go from there. I'm out of here. Peace. Hey.